Samuel Doe had risen to power after staging a brutal coup to depose the government that was made up of American Liberians, and he became Liberia's first president of exclusive indigenous heritage. It was quite ironic that on his ascendancy to power, he did so via brutal means, and so would be his eventual demise. In this episode of Historical Africa, we take a look at the rise to power, eventual demise, and death of Liberia's first indigenous president, Samuel Doe. Samuel Doe, born in 1950, emerged as a prominent figure in Liberian history during the late 20th century. He came from humble beginnings, growing up in the rural regions of Liberia. Despite his lack of formal education, he joined the army and quickly climbed the ranks due to his charisma and leadership skills. According to reports, he gained a reputation as a skilled sharpshooter and a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Samuel Doe was promoted from a private to a corporal and first sergeant within two days in 1975. Samuel Doe would undergo training at the camp in Liberia and his camp was run by United States Special Forces or Green Berets and in 1979, he would become the master sergeant of the army. And like other indigenous Liberians, Samuel Doe resented the privilege and power that had been granted to American Liberians, who were the descendants of the freed American slaves who founded the colony of Liberia in 1822. American Liberians are Liberians of African-American descent. They traced their ancestry to freeborn and formal enslaved African Americans who immigrated to Liberia in the 19th century. In 1822, the American Colonization Society ACS, established the Liberian colony on the West African coast to send freeborn African Americans and manumitted slaves back to the African continent. Numerous settlements were established along the coasts as thousands of immigrants, about 12,000 in total, made the journey across the Atlantic throughout the 19th century. Now, instead of creating a land of liberty that made a clean break from the brutal parts of slavery, then American Liberians would go on to oppress the natives of the land, denying them political rights and acting like slave masters that they had escaped from. The American Liberian settlers were from the beginning essentially American rather than African in outlook and orientation. They retained preferences for Western modes of dress, Southern plantation style homes, American food, Christianity, the English language, and monogamous kinship practices. The years of American Liberian rule were characterized by exploitation of the indigenous people who still constitute more than 97% of the Liberian population. Meanwhile, the year before Samuel Doe coup was a time of intensifying hardship for most Liberians. At the same time, there was an increasing display of wealth by the elites. The then president William Talbert announced an increase of the price of rice, which was the Liberian staple food. When it became apparent that Talbert and members of his family stood to benefit personally from the price increase, thousands of Liberians stood up in a series of street demonstrations in Monrovia the capital of Liberia. Talbert ordered the police to open fire on unarmed demonstrators. More than 60 protesters were killed and hundreds were injured. These rice riots would create a groundswell of disgruntlement towards the Talbert government. So, in 1980, Samuel Doe, then a 28-year-old master sergeant, assumed power in Liberia in a base of glory in a surprise night attack on the executive mansion. Overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, Samuel Doe and his accomplices brutally murdered William Tolbert, ending a 133 years of rule by black American Liberians and their descendants. Some days after President Tolbert met his brutal end, 13 of the most senior officials in his government were stripped down to their underwear and publicly executed on a beach in Monrovia. Having discarded William Tolbert, Samuel Doe became Liberia's first president of exclusive indigenous heritage. After the coup, Samuel Doe assumed to the rank of general and established the People's Redemption Council, composed of himself and 14 other low-ranking officers, to rule the country. Doe's coup was initially seen as a hopeful change, promising to bring equality and justice to the Liberian people. He would promise the people that he would return Liberia to civilian rule. 
He also promised to put an end to the corrupt and oppressive domination by the American Liberian elites and to establish a more equitable distribution of the nation's wealth. A constitution that was drawn up was endorsed by the Liberian people in a referendum held in 1984. It provided for a creation of an interim national assembly in the same year, 1984. Samuel Do declared his candidacy for the presidency and founded the National Democratic Party of Liberia. He was re-elected on October 15, 1985 over his chief opponent, Yomi Jackson. The election was surrounded by much controversy as opponents claimed that it was fraudulent. Many political leaders had been imprisoned under the infamous decree which made it a crime to criticize the head of state or his government. The Special Elections Commission was also used to frustrate the registration of political parties. The political unrest culminated in a failed coup attempt in November of 1985. Samuel Doe successfully put down a nearly successful coup attempt, killing hundreds, mostly members of the Geo and Manu tribes from the remote border region of Nimba County. With his brutality, Doe had swung the seeds for his eventual downfall, but we will cover that shortly. Doe's new government briefly flirted with Libya before aligning firmly with the US. It is important to note that Samuel Doe ascended to power during the Cold War, so the United States were greatly relieved when Doe maintained the country's pro-Western stance. This position was rewarded with massive foreign assistance from the administration of President Ronald Reagan and a state visit to the White House in 1982. Doe's decade-long rule is often remembered for these atrocities, but he also had some defenders. For instance, William K. Gley a Liberian politician who was a cousin and former advisor to President Doe, claims that many of the most egregious atrocities under Doe's watch, such as a massacre at the Monrovia Beach, were perpetrated by undisciplined commanders. The region administration had maintained that they believed Samuel Doe was steering Liberia towards democracy. Until 1985, Liberia was the largest per capita recipient of U.S. aid in the sub-Saharan Africa, receiving more assistance from the U.S. in 1981 to 1985 than over the entire previous century. Though by the time, rebels Charles Taylor and Prince Johnson moved to overthrow Doe at the twilight of the Cold War, this support had evaporated. Meanwhile, Samuel Doe also faced severe economic challenges. Liberia would experience a sharp decline in foreign investments and an unprecedented unemployment rate of over 60%. Samuel Doe tried to boost the economy by introducing a seven-corner dollar coin as the first official Liberian currency. However, this didn't boost the economy. By the end of the 1980s, Liberia had a foreign debt of over two billion United States dollars and was near bankruptcy. Some of Doe's brutality alongside his favoritism of his own tribe would lead to his eventual demise. The excessive and brutal reprisals of the clan-led Liberian army against the Mano and Geo people in Liberia proved to be an important stepping stone to the civil war that officially began in December of 1989. On 24 December 1989, Charles Taylor, a former ally of Doe, crossed into Liberia from Ivory Coast to wage a guerrilla war against Doe. Taylor had broken out of a jail in the United States where he was awaiting extradition to Liberia on charges of embezzlement. The conflict quickly fled into full-fledged civil war. By mid-1990, most of Liberia was controlled by rebel factions. On 9 September 1990, Doe was invited to the Ecomog headquarters by General Kwaino for a meeting and assured him of his safety from the rebels. Doe arrived at a precarious time doing an ongoing change in guard duty, from the well-armed and better-equipped Nigerian team of peacemakers to the weaker Gambian contingent. The Nigerian team had just withdrawn from the scene when Doe's convoy of lightly armed personnel arrived. Doe was escorted to General Kwaino's office where he was formally welcomed while most of his team of aides and guards waited outside. Johnson's rebels surprised everyone by suddenly arriving on the scene, uninvited and heavily armed, overwhelming and disarming the entirety of Doe's team while encountering no resistance. They then started shooting Doe's team individually and later in groups. Upon hearing the gunshots from outside, Doe expressed concern to Quino, who assured him that all was fine. 
Quino later excused himself to check on what was happening outside and was followed by his aide, Captain Coker of the Gambian contingent. Both men took cover upon assessing the situation. Johnson's men moved indoors, finished off Doe's remaining team, shot him in the leg and took him captive. When the dust settled, over 80 of Doe's men lay dead. Doe was taken to Johnson's military base. To prove that he was not protected by black magic, Johnson ordered Doe's ears to be cut off in his presence. After 12 hours of torture at Johnson's hands, Doe was finally murdered. His corpse had its head shaved and was exhibited naked in the streets of Monrovia with cigarette burns. Samuel Doe's death would be the start of the Liberian Civil War. Doe's time in power is commonly seen as a dark period in Liberia's history. His 10 years at the helm, as well as the civil war that began under his reign, continued to cast a long shadow on the events in Liberia. Today, the nation has since made strides towards national healing, but the scars of this war still remain. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.